going to keep with our beach theme and we did an ocean but I thought this is something beachy that might be a little easier for some to do. I also had a request a little while back that somebody would like to see a seashell and I think it looks cute right on the raw rock because a lot of raw rocks look a lot like sand. So um, we're going to make one of these today. Um, Making a seashell even in size can be tricky, so I will um, show you how I created my seashell shape. Seashell shape. That is tricky to say. <laughs> um, I'm using my trusty post-it notes. I use these a lot. Uh, they're perfectly square, so a lot of times they're easy and they're handy and they're cheap. So uh, start by drawing the height of your rock. If your rock doesn't fit on the post-it, that's good, but give yourself a couple guidelines as far as how tall your rock is. And you want to stay a good space in between that because you always have that curved edge. And then just draw a nice, tall, skinny teardrop, basically, is all you need to do. Now you're going to fold your paper in half. Now don't worry about folding it widthwise in half. You just want to make sure that it's actually at a 90 degree angle, or even at the bottom, not necessarily at the side, right at your point, like this. Now, your seashell, you're going to create a line out here for a guideline. The furthest one over is usually about a 45 degree angle. So give yourself, you cut your corner here in half, like that. And we're gonna create one more here and then one more here. And don't worry about the lines in between because you're not gonna actually use those. You're just getting the outside shape like so. And then they have this little area here at the bottom. It kind of comes out like so. It's part of what holds the shell together like that. And you just take a pair of scissors and cut this shape out and you will have a little shell. Now, I'm not gonna have any sticky left on this just because I didn't do it super close to the bottom, but that's okay. You just use a little roll of painter's tape or, and it will hold it down, but you've got your nice little shell template that you'll be able to use. Good morning, Gina. Hi, Raven. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mary. Um, so you'll have this shape that you can use. You just use one of your painter pens and you can outline it and oh, magic here. You outline it on your rock. And then you can color it in. Um, I actually use tube acrylic paint to color this in and just let it dry. And then you've got your basic shell shape and we're gonna start coloring from here. So today I am going to be doing a different shade. I did purple and pink on this one, a light purple and pink from the pastel set. I'm gonna do a blue and kind of a green aqua color on this one. And we're just gonna work along. I also have a damp paper towel here. It's just got a little bit of water on it and a brush that I'm gonna use for blending. And I also have my white um, pen as well. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Kathy. Oh, I'm glad you caught us live too. If you're catching this live, thanks for joining in live. Um, and if you're watching the replay, make sure to comment and everything in the replay. I see those comments too. So we're just gonna start with the darker of the two colors, whichever one you feel is darker. Um, I think the blue is a little darker than the green. And I'm going to start by doing the very tippy top edge here and just going along my curves of my shell. Make sure I'm in frame here. And go along here like so. And then I'm going to do get my green ready and my white ready. And since this is the top one, I actually am going to make this line a little bit thicker. And you can play around with the different weights of lines on this a lot because if you think of like how the seashell is, it just kind of blends different thicknesses as well. So we're going to go right into our green. And this white is completely dry. Um, so we're going to actually add a little bit of white here underneath too, just so that they fade into white. Now my brush is not actually very wet yet, so we're just gonna dunk it in water once, but then we're gonna kinda pat it dry here. And we're gonna use the same technique we kinda did when we did our ocean. We're just gonna kind of blend these colors together and then pull the arch down just the littlest bit because that's gonna help you with your lines to help you 
decipher where your next one's going to go. So it's going to go back and forth. And the longer the paint sits here, it will it can dry a little bit. So if you need to get a little bit more wetness on your brush, you can. But the thing is, you can always get more water. Once you get too much on there, you'll start to pick up your paint. So it, it is a technique that takes a little bit of practice. But we did the same thing when we were doing our ocean earlier this week. So you just kind of go back and forth like that and then just pull those lines because that's going to be kind of your guideline as you move down your shell. And since this one's a little bit bigger than the shell I did before, I think doing all the way across might be a little much. So by the time I got over here, it was a little more dry than I'd like it to be. So for the next one, I think I'm going to just do um, the first three and then I'll move across. So just kind of play around with it. So just follow the edge, you know, the lines you're making yourself. You kind of want them to meet in the middle and you can have as many bumps as you want when you make your shell. But you're going to just start just below so that you have that little bit of white that peeks through. And we're going to just do the same thing here. I'm just going to do three of them, like so. And then come in with our green and a little white. There we go. And then right back in with our brush to kind of blend those together. See, keep that color a little bit darker. There we go. And don't forget to pull that line down. Just kind of imagine you got a point here that you're heading to because that will help you get your next line each time. Place your curves. There we go. And basically that's it. We're going to work our way down our shell. Um, when we get down to the bottom, there's going to be um, the areas down here. I, I like to give them a solid color to them. So I'll show you what I mean there in a second. But this was one, and I'm going to have to go back. The Whoever asked for the shell asked a long time ago, so I apologize. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to requests, but I try. I try to do them as long as I can find what I consider to be a 101 style, something that I think anybody can accomplish. And this, these are fun, and like I said, it will take a little, can take a little bit of practice. Just remember, very, very light touches with the brush. Very light touch. Doesn't take much. Now you can also do a couple rows that are just a plain blue row. I do suggest that you kind of fade it just a little bit because you don't want any really super harsh lines on these. So you could do just a line just of the blue, just to give it a variation in the color. Just kind of give it just a littlest touch with that brush just to kind of give it a little fade. Just always try to pull it, the color down into the shell. Like that. Okay. Just pull those down. Make sure you keep your lines coming down so you know where to aim with your next color. There we go. We're finally getting some beautiful weather today. I'm telling you. I was painting that beach scene and it made me want to go to the beach so bad. It's been a while since I've seen the ocean. But a lot of people were doing those. If you missed that one earlier, we did a sand and an ocean. We were kind of using the same technique with the blending of the colors using just that littlest bit of water on your brush. If you feel like you're wiping away a lot of your color, you probably have too wet of a brush. But just like any other technique, you know, the more you try it, don't try once and say you can't do it and give up, you know, give it a couple tries. If you wipe away too much of your paint, just wait for it to dry just a little bit and you can go back in and add some more paint. There we go. So you kind of continue this all the way down. Uh, a lot of times at the bottom of the shell, 
I am going to go around my outside edge at the end with the blue anyway, so I'm going to do part of that right now. You have those corners that are on here, so you're going to kind of cut across here to the point. It's not really a point, it'll be more of a rounded edge here at the corner or the bottom, like so. And when I do that, same thing, I don't want a super harsh edge, so I'm just going to come in and blend that out just a little bit on the edge. And then I'm going to fill these corners in solid blue, like that. There we go. And there's also a lot of times an area at the bottom of the shell where the, the lines don't go all the way down. So if you want to separate that area before you get all the way to the bottom so you don't accidentally pull those lines in, you can. Um, you can use your triangle shape to try to get it even. And I'm just going to make it just like I'm doing the arches, just a nice thick one here at the bottom. So I'm going to get some white down here in the corner, a little bit of blue, and then we'll blend that together. Or, I'm sorry, green. A little bit more there. And then we'll blend these together before they get dry. And again, see, I haven't actually gotten my brush wet. In a little bit, I might do it just a smidge to get some of this blue off so I don't wipe it all away, but I think it may be okay. See, I rarely put it all the way into the water. Only if something's really set. I'm gonna add a little bit more white here. I'm kind of pull that white up a little. There we go. So that's how you're going to do this rock. I mean, I'm, you keep doing your layers until you get closer to the bottom. So I'll probably do a couple more layers on here. But this is one that I think a lot of people enjoy. Like I said, it looks really neat on a plain rock like this. Because, the you know, I have this rock. It kind of has a sand tone to it. And it's actually a pretty bumpy rock. And I'm able to make something pretty on a, on a bumpy rock, too. So I hope you give this one a try. If you haven't submitted a beach-themed rock yet, that was the prompt for this week for the 52 rocks. So this could be one that you could still do and, and add for everybody to see. Now, as we get further down the bottom, see I worked my way all the way across that, that time because I'm getting closer to the bottom here. So I can get across a lot faster. Don't forget to pull those lines down. I think I'll just do maybe one more on here. There we go. Like so. Oh, here. Lost my blue for a second. I'll do one more. Like that. And you know what? I'm going to leave this last one just blue because I did that one up there just blue. So I just wanted to have one more like that. So it looks intentional not like I made a mistake right there we go and I like having that little bit of white there we'll pull our lines straight down into that blue like so so there we go we have our fun seashell rock you can get this out of the way a little bit here my desk is a mess make sure to put your lids back on your pens if you're using pens you could do this with a brush too just like so there's a little simple seashell that you guys can all give a try. Uh, if you do make a seashell, do whatever colors you want. They can be fun, they can be bright, they can be vibrant, whatever you feel like doing. But whatever you do, make sure you come back and leave a comment to show it off below because I love seeing the rocks that you all do. So give this one a try. Um, thanks for sharing and liking and commenting, everybody. I really appreciate it. I always come back through and read them all. No matter how busy I am, I promise I'll get to them. So take it easy, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.